ship's log. Um, one. I've decided to keep a journal of life on board ship. Since turning 28, I feel a new maturity about myself. In fact, I can't even remember the last time I tried to urinate on Rimmer from the top of B-Deck. No, wait a minute. Friday. But apart from that one lapse, maturity-wise, I'm practically up there with Abe, Lincoln and Moses. Just recently, we came across a craft piloted by ourselves from 15 years into our future. We had a bit of an argument and they attacked us. See attached. We were no match. They killed us and destroyed everything on board ship, including the time drive, which meant there was no time drive for them to have in the future, to bring back into the past, to destroy the future of their past selves in the present. In other words, by killing us, they killed themselves, because once we were dead, it was impossible for us to become them in the future and return in time to kill ourselves in the past, even though it was the present. Emergency! Fire them a log recorder suite! Emergency! Have you been trying to explain what happened with our future selves again? I just thought I'd give it one more go. The machine can't take it, sir. Yeah, but what about Starbuck being damaged, about the timeline being erased? Because this reality is unstable, and anomalies have merged from both dimensions to cope with the paradox. Garbled, confused, and quite frankly, duller than an in-flight magazine produced by Air Belgium. Just give our position and explain we're down on supplies. OK, OK. This is Dave Lister of the JMC Transport Vehicle Starbug. We're down on supplies. We need help. Out. Oh, by the way, we're in space. Just past a sort of ready moon a couple of days ago. Coordinates enclosed. Pasta. Are you sick? Pasta's up people with table mats. Stupid of me. I tell you, man, curries were my life. I remember once on Planet Leave on Orion, I drank a yard of Vindaloo sauce. You know how on those long glass tubes? And then went on the pull. It was a bet. I tell you, man, those were the days. Oh, it is impossible for a mechanoid to vomit, sir. I do believe it is safe for you to go on. Crichton, what a night. Did you two use the vernacular, get off with anyone? The only thing he got off was the loo about a month and a half later. I went to this club, the crazy Astro. Started dancing with this space core nurse. Couldn't hear a name. Fido, was it? Lassie, possibly? She was very attractive, actually, Rimmer. Very short skirt and book teeth never bothered me. Anyway, the yard of Vindaloo sauce is sloshing around inside. But things are going really well, and it's obvious she's more than a little bit interested. So, women still find you attractive after a yard of Vindaloo sauce? It's amazing, isn't it? You would have thought that most people would have found it a little tricksy being an ace seducer with breath that could shear sheep. But not Listy, no. He's Casanova even when he's got mouth fumes that could halt a charging brontosaurus. Anyway, the next thing I know, we're up against this pillar trying to exchange tongues, and that's when it happened, Crichton. The Vindaloo just wanted to be born. I legged it across the dance floor, clambered over this wall, and elbowed this guy out of the cubicle. I tell you, I didn't get out until seven in the morning. They couldn't close the club. They had to wait for me to finish. Nearly put me off curries for life. In fact, I didn't have another one until the following night. Oh, what an enchanting little story. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm just off to glug a couple of yards of Vindy sauce. Then if we do chance across Planet of the Snooty Sex Sirens, I can't miss. No more curry nights. I can't believe it. Everything has its time, sir. Even the Renaissance came to an end eventually. Right, and I hardly think you can equate my love of curries with a few lard arse angels cavorting around on church ceilings. I'll make a note, sir. OK, Crichton, we want the Taj Mahal Tandoori restaurant. Hang on, none of us are wearing trainers, are we? No, fine, they'll give us a table, no problem. They're behind the JMC building in London. Mm. I'll need a moment to acquaint myself with the controls. FBI! What the go? 
trying to hurt me. Don't shoot the suit. Bullet holes won't go with these collars. No, wait. Yes, it will. Okay, fire away. Hands on heads. What kind of a dude was he? He was a fine man. He formed the Peace Corps, fought for equal rights, tried to pull America out of Vietnam, and end the Cold War with the USSR. Look! Got no behaviour protocols, have you? Got the morality of a piranha. No worse, a tabloid photographer. And you thought causality didn't matter? Out. Sorry, chaps. Dying's not on today's itinerary. <laughs> Don't usually like to shoot an unarmed man, Voorhees, eh? Not cricket. But in your case, I'm prepared to make an exception. I'm touched. Mind if I borrow this? Ah! I'll be sure to return it as soon as you hit the ground! See you later, alligator! What prize do you claim if you should defeat my best knight? Well, I, man, I mean, your kingness, would claim a knight and a day in the bed of your fair lady. That is the most extraordinary request these ears have ever heard, sir. No, when I say a knight and a day in her bed, I obviously mean with her there at the same time. It's not that extraordinary. Uh, I think they got that bit, sir. I mean, I obviously don't want to spend the night and a day in her bed by myself. <laughs> Talking Knoxville here, me and the Queen, 24 hours, non-stop love fest. That is coming across, isn't it? We accept the challenge. The red, green and blue alert signs are all flashing. What the smeg does that mean? Well, either we're under attack, sir, or we're having a disco. You can discount the second option. Rumor banned discos when he saw the way I danced the funky chicken. You're really dying? Is there anything I can do? I know. There's a tea chest down on C deck that will make a cracking coffin. As a matter of fact, there is something you can do to help. Take a pew. I'd rather stand if it's all the same to you. <clears throat> Arnie. I want you to become the next ace rimmer. And you think I'm your man? Well, I was hoping that... Make it to a dimension where the Arnold Rimmer was made out of sturdier stuff. But what with my chest having more holes in it than a Jeffrey Archer plot, only made it to here. So, let me get this straight. You want me to go off on some trans-dimensional quest, defending the weak, like some overgrown boy scout in a stupid silver jumpsuit? What do you say? I think you're forgetting that I suffer from a medical condition known as extreme cowardice. Or to use the Latin, bigus crapo anytime dangerismus. I know it may be a little hard to accept. Hard to accept? No, Marilyn Monroe and Arthur Miller is hard to accept. George Lazenby as James Bond. Oven chips. This is preposterous. It's your destiny, Arnie. What, to wind up looking like a reject from a gay pride disco? Well... I should hold it for a few hours. That's all I've got, Davy. Which is why it's imperative you help me recruit on. But Ace, how can Rimmer become you? It's just not possible. Remember that story I told you about when I was kept back a year in school? How that kick in the teeth spurred me on to become a winner? What, you're saying that story's about as accurate as Helen Keller's golf swing? Oh, it's true, Davy. But it happened to the original Ace. It's part of the legend. What legend? <sighs> I'm not the first Ace. Not even the second. There have been... Well, let's just say more than a couple. As one ace dies, he recruits his replacement from a parallel dimension. We all start off as caterpillars and turn into butterflies. But Rumor likes being a caterpillar. Let me tell you how I was recruited. In my dimension, I stole the time drive, left my Lister in Crichton for dead, and wound up in Napoleonic times. War was raging. Conscription was introduced. It gave me no other choice but to put on a dress and seek work in a flower shop. A dress? I was an inveterate coward. If it'd been a true rumor, you'd have faced conscription like a man. Simply told the army you were rampant homosexual. 
I was potting petunias one evening when Ace came into the shop. Poor chap. Hell of a state. I did all I could. Well, slug of whiskey and a shot of morphine. Complimentary freesias and a carnation for his buttonhole. But he wasn't interested in floral wear. He just wanted the legend of Ace to continue. He managed to hang on for a couple of days, training me, cajoling me. And finally, on his deathbed, he handed over his wig and his shades and gave me the keys to his ship. Spent the next couple of years dimension hopping. But now, as I face the end, it's time to pass on the flame to Arnie. But you're talking about a man who, at the first sign of danger, cowers under tables with a colander on his head. This is where you must be to become Maria von Trapp. Think, man. Why is it good to be in a high place? Uh, because from a high place, you can look down girls' cleavages. No, because from a high place, you get the big picture. I preferred my answer. Just concentrate. Smeg. I've just sneezed out me cap. Oh, it's great and sticky toffee pudding. How many times? It's just too sticky. Oh, where the smeg is it? Just thought I'd change your linen before you turn in for the night, sir. Hey, nice outfit. And I thought you had less style than a 1970s TV cop. Boy, was I wrong. Did you come in here for a reason? Apologies for the late arrival of Shuttlecraft 724, <clears throat> returning from shore leave on Mimas. Where the hell have you been, Lister? I've reported you as A-W-O-L. S-O-W-H-A-T. Hey? I've been on shore leave, man. Didn't you get me a message? You have to apply to a superior officer before you get shore leave, Lister. <sighs> Rimmer, give me a break. Ever since your chance you split with me, I've needed some time on my own, OK? Is that the kind of guy you are? Someone who'd take advantage of a woman who's half insensible? What am I talking about? They're your favourite kind. I was going to tell you honestly. They always taught me in school it was rude to talk with your mouth full. We all went to the wedding. It was just beautiful. Broke our hearts when they split. Such a good match. Guys, give me a break. You married this? In Gelf law, separation is impossible without special dispensation from... <laughs> A Chief Justice of Well, let's call him for short. Ordinates. Thank you. Are you there? What was that first number again? I've seen fairground darts which are sharper than you guys. Chris, we stop treating us like we're a useless bunch of no hopers. We know what we're doing, OK? Why are you on Starbug anyway? Where's your red dwarf? Long story. Long, long, long story. Long, 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 long story. Long, long story. Too mature for this. I'm just going to sit here and read me comic. Thong! Thong, you're kidding. It's gone behind that sock now. Behind a sock? How big was it? I'm not interested. Not interested. What colour was it? Blue. Like tooth floss. Oh, buddy, it's a great show tonight. I've cleaned out an old retro housing and filled it with hot water. And I've made some bath oils from fruit extracts and spices. Sleep in my quarters tonight. I'll take yours. There's a glass of wine on the soap rack. It tastes fine, just don't ask what it's made from. I don't know what to say. This is the best thing that's happened to me since I came here. It started that night you had a bath in my quarters, remember? The point is, the ship's just not big enough for all of us. We filled the escape pod with fuel, so with any luck it should at least get you to some planet. And we've got you this leaving present. 
There should be a hatchway in your shower, sir. Well, why don't we just blow the door? With what? The only thing that can cause deadly explosions in this room is your collection of pickled eggs. We're gonna have to go through the ducts. How long is that gonna take? I couldn't possibly be gay. I can't grow a big moustache for starters. Ask anyone, it just grows in little clumps. And you've seen my quarters. Have I got a sofa full of little cushions? No way. And have you ever, ever heard me whistle a show tune? I'm straight, me. Straight as a Roman road. Dave, shut up. I'm just saying. I really miss him. Right in the middle of the bootle player's amateur production of the importance of being earnest. Boy, that's enough to freak anyone out. The look on Lady Bracknell's face. I'll never forget it, man. No one I know. I hate this. I really hate this. Sirs, are you OK? We're fine. No, we're not. I'm a smeggin' long way from fine. I'm not even on the ring road that leads to fine bypass. Stay where you are, we're coming out. Can't wait to hear what they did in sex education class. The point is, although it was great, I knew no one was real. Ooh, you must have been grateful to go home in the holidays, Mum. Well, my parents were both pretty busy, actually. Dad was an archaeologist, off-world a lot, and Mum worked all the time, advertising. So I stayed in cyberspace during the holidays. So you didn't go home at all? Well, I duplicated Mum and Dad and the house and Tramper. It was like it probably would have been if they'd actually been there. Sounds like the most dreadful childhood imaginable, Mum. No, it was a perfect childhood. Literally perfect. It was just it was all computer generated. At 18, when I finally got out, I kind of went off the rails. Really? No, not really. I snogged Hell's Angels and was permanently out of my head. I was in the real life for the first time. No protectors. I went insane. All of the interesting things that ever happened to me happened when I was in the room. Coincidence? Get out of here. Cat. And answer me this. Why does daytime always begin the second I finish sleeping? And that's because you're the centre of the universe? Too right. Everyone thinks that. Everybody thinks I'm the centre of the universe? Cool. I think we've been knocked off course. Probably due to the initial impact of the generators going down. I think we're heading straight into that sun. Let's keep crawling. But Mom, feel the temperature. It's roasting in here. Starbucks about to turn into a giant stellar fondue pup. And it's all my fault. I had this really weird dream about a monkey being stretched across a tennis court. Noise was just unbearable. Were you practicing the guitar again last night? Uh, yeah. I was trying to learn a second chord. I think I've just about mastered it. So, what's for breakfast? We're getting nowhere, bud. He won't throw any of his stuff away because it reminds him of the good times he had with Rimmer. I must have blinked and missed them. Mm. Sounds to me, sir, like you're missing him. Missing Rimmer? The man with the compassion of a door frame and the heart of a glove puppet. The man who could bore dead people out of rigor mortis. <laughs> yes, sir. That's the one. Don't make me laugh. You see, <laughs> you're feeling better just talking about him. Maybe I am missing him. Mm -hmm. Although it's a mystery to me, sir, how you can feel nostalgic about someone you once referred to as the walking equivalent of toenail clippings. You don't know, Crichton. You don't know what we used to do back on Red Dwarf in the early days. You're quite right, sir. As usual. How could I have made such an elementary mistake? As usual. We're gonna die! We're all gonna die! I don't wanna die! There are all sorts of food combinations I haven't tried yet! Sometimes it needed a strong mind and cool nerves to hold the crew together. Save us! Somebody save us before I wet me kex! Get a grip, Lister. You can't be a coward all your life. Next to you, a big girl's blouse looks like a flak jacket. Thanks, Rimmer. I needed that. That never happened. I swear that never happened. I'd have killed him if he'd done that. What is this? I've just been faithful to his diaries, sir. <sighs> it's a times like these that I get really scared. Me too. <sighs> I have control. Hold on, men, and don't worry. Oh, 
Well done, Rimmer. Three cheers for Arnold. Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Hip, hip, hooray! Say, Rimmer's a really great guy, isn't he? I don't know what we'd do without him. I owe my life to him. Owe my life to him? I don't know that creep the time of day. Gosh, the speed at which Mr. Rimmer's brain moves is incredible. It makes my ram cash look like a snail dragging a house brick. When did I ever say that? This is criminal libel. Ah! <laughs> Curry too hot for you, Listy. The spicier the better for me. I can't stand this. Get me out of here. <laughs> You're in trouble, he will save the day. He's brave and he's fearless, come what may. Without him, the mission would go astray. He's Arnold, Arnold, Arnold Rimmer. Without him, life would be much grimmer. He's handsome, trim, and no one slimmer. He will never need a zimmer. He's Arnold, Arnold, Arnold Rimmer. More reliable than a guy. He's never been mistaken for your grinner. He's not bald and his head doesn't glimmer. Master of the wit and the rep party. His command of space directives is uncanny. How come he's such a genius? Don't ask me. He's also a fantastic swimmer And if you play your cards right Then he just might come around for dinner He's Arnold, Arnold, Arnold Rimmer No rhymes left now apart from Quimmer He hopes they played us out before we get to Schlimmer Play out you stupid Flimmer Supper. The thing is, we didn't know. Just put it in the oven. We'll have it in a couple of hours. Hours? You may never see me again. In fact, if you wanted to keep, I'd put it in suspended animation. But, but I mean, it's, it's just... I don't believe we've had the pleasure of meeting your handsome young friends. <laughs> <laughs> What's got into them? They've been hitting the wacky-backy. That's the way young girls were in those days. This is Mr Lister. And his friend, Mr. Cat. Perhaps you would like to join us on a turn round the forest and later have tea in Mr. Bingley's gazebo. Sounds great, but unfortunately I'm getting my sinuses drained tonight. Lister! Oh, please, Mama, can they come? No. Oh, excellent. I didn't know robots got PMT. Well, back to reality then. You sure you know what you're doing? Me. Hey. Ketchup with lobster you want? I thought you said you knew what you were doing. No, I just said hey. If you'd let me finish the whole sentence, it would have been hey. No, I don't. You're an idiot. Hey, you've noticed. <laughs> Come on, where have you been? We've been having a terrible time in here. I've been checking myself out in front of the mirror. It's frightening how nine hours can just slip by. Any luck? We've been back and forth through his core program, and as far as we can tell, nothing's wrong. I mean, what can you do without a head? Apart from being you, hardly anything. We're gonna have to get him another one somehow. Oh, yeah, fine, Chris, no problem. <laughs> Why not fun up heads you like and get them to deliver? Get one for Anne Boleyn while you're at it. I didn't say it was gonna be easy. Take a peek out the window. You know all that black stuff? It means we're in deep space. Don't tell me where we are, Dave. I know where we are. Knowing where we are is what I do. So where are we? At the moment, up a creek that rhymes with pit. I should have been looking out for him. How could I let this happen? When was the century built? Maybe they had a mechanoid service unit. We didn't hang around that long. It was kind of spooky. The last time I broke out into a cold sweat like that was when I saw my first vampire movie. I hate vampires. You know what happens when they bite you? You look in a mirror and there's nothing. What do they do all day? No wonder they get up so late. Think. 
Any clues when it was built? Whose hand is that? Sorry. Sorry? Mm, you smell good. Thanks. Smell that, dude? What's his aftershave? Corpse for men? They're all missing their primers. Girls, hey, midget girls, come to visit, have you? Well, clear yourself some room. You like some soup? It's fresh this year. <laughs> we didn't meet last time you called. I was in AR, but I knew you'd been. You thieving rascals. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, off to spare my kids, eh? You, man! Nice one. Be lovely with a bit of mint sauce. No way, Sleazy. How about a trade, eh? What's your problem? Why do you hate us so much? Humans have done some really great things. Name one. MacArthur Park? All right. Give you that. <laughs> right. Let's get back online here. We ain't selling, OK? Fuel supplies anything, but not the human. Crichton, that file in your CPU, the one you've never been able to access. The password is 4X2C. Hang on, man. Eh? It's about your creator, Crichton, Dr. Mamet. Yeah, hey, Crichton, bro. Don't access it, man. No, the truth is in there. That's what turned me into a zony. You can't resist it, can you, Crichton? Hey, no make can. Crichton, no! Well, there's nothing about Dr. Mamet that could hurt me. She created me. Accessing now. No. It can't be true. It can't. You keep secrets from me, sir. Like what? Well, how about the fact that when you're in the privacy of your sleeping quarters and there's no one around, you read books. How do you know about that? Works of literature. I found them under your bed. Treasure Island, Robinson Crusoe, the classics. All right, keep it down. You completely blow me image. It's just an education thing I'm going through. I'll grow out of it. And what about your nickname when you were at school? What nickname? You have jeopardized the lives of the entire crew, breaking the most basic fundamental command codes. Oh, don't get all strict on me, man. I can't respond to that. Oh, I'm locking you in here. It's the only place you can't do any harm. I'm sorry. I didn't mean nothing. It's real mad. We don't stand a chance. I can't throw him off. Nothing's working. I'm using every trick I know to distract him. Pity we can't all moon out of the starboard portholes. That always works for me. Wait, someone's left the ship. An escape pod. That's going to give our position away. It's evil. It's heading towards the sim ship. Why, that slimy, double-crossing, two-faced piece of scum. He's no brother of mine. Great anniversary party, Critters. Now that I've got the hang of writing our own AR program, sir, the possibilities are limitless. Curry world, fan smag fantastic. How utterly splendid. Mine's the Vindaloo, whatever that is. Mary's is the Mutton Fall. And dear Jane's is the Mixed Dicker Special with extra chilies. And you're all having lagers, right? That's a kind of ale, isn't it? 
Aren't we wicked girls? <laughs> <laughs> OK, good drink, good meat, good grief. Let's eat. Mrs Bennet, Jane, Kitty, I beg you have the omelette with the big chips. I do declare, Mr Lister, this is most scrumptious, isn't it, girls? Oh, Mama, it's the most succulent dish I've ever tasted. Some more fowl sauce, if you please, Mr Waiter. We are all infinitely indebted to you, Mr Lister. A most meritorious venture. I studied them in my first year in the Corps, but I've never seen one up this close before. Isn't it incredible? A big iceberg is not incredible. The fact that male fish agreed to a mating system where the presence of the female fish isn't compulsory, that's incredible. But this? Uh-uh. Look at those crystalline formations. They're fabaroo. OK, standard SCP scan and log. Hey, we're well outside analysis range. Can we get any closer? Sure, we can go to dinner. Maybe go for a moonlit walk together. It's coming into range any time now. Locking on. Scanning and logging. It's the Leviathan, sir. A 23rd century JMC supply ship. Engines are dead. Power overload. Looks like they were running from something. Wait. I'm picking up a life sign. Are you absolutely sure? Certain. There's five of us here. Uh, I swallowed a mouse about 20 minutes ago. It's probably still running around in my stomach wondering what the hell happened. This way. Thank you for sharing that mouse story with us. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope that isn't real fur. I don't know. You'll have to ask the little squealy things I cut it all. Look at their twisted, tortured faces. Their sheer blind terror. What unnamed horror could have led them to such terrible suffering? It's grotesque. I mean, blue lips with yellow work suits? What were they thinking of? Ah! Ah! Oh, my God! What is it? Where? You knew her? Yeah, she made a pass at me once. I didn't know you played for the women's football team. Not all women have the same lamentable lack of taste as you, you know. So what happened? She dumped you. For your information, rainfall, girl. I dumped her in a really cruel and horrible way that I'm really proud of. I don't believe you. A supply officer would never go out with you. Well, I don't recall hearing that, sir. See, it's affecting him already. OK, let's get it back to the bug. That's for the furry squealy things and the mouse story, which was the most disgusting thing I ever heard. Oh, man! It's right in my crevice! Her frozen brain simply reverted to irrational, almost animalistic behaviour. It's a typical response to cryonically damaged synapses. Must have been one of my exes. I feel really lousy. Oh, you're probably just in shock. Don't be such a baby. It's the epidemic virus, sir. A, a man-made parasite created as a rival to the nicotine patch. Do you mean it's going to make me cough in a very loud theatrical manner if I'm seated near a smoker in a restaurant? Epidem was an intelligent organism designed to block all neural signals relating to nicotine craving. If we could patch in the universal translator, it might just be possible to talk to it. I believe it's your only chance, sir. Chat to your virus? What are you going to do for an encore, bud? Dance the lumbada with your lumbago? You're not helping. He died so you could go on living. Is that so different from what I'm doing? Of course it is, totally. Well, jump at any time to help me out. Uh... I'm sorry, sir. It's just that the, the chicken argument is so persuasive. Oh, I better go. No, it's not persuasive. I'm a human being. I have certain qualities that elevate me above poultry. I'm the last guy alive. And that gives you more right to exist than me? Well, yeah, because... Documentary time! Viruses have always been the most numerous form of life. Well, maybe, after sociology graduates. Time for your species to check out, Davy. Arrivederci, Yumi's. Oh. I never thought I'd come across a disease that likes the sound of its own voice. You obviously haven't watched much daytime TV. OK. 
crab sale. A B S E I L. Hmm, on the money. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here's a tough one. Anathema. A N A T H E M A. Correct, Mundo. By the way, that's anathema to you, Kitty. Uh, hey, Bud. This virus really is intelligent. <laughs> He's about ten times more smarter than me. But hey, an empty yogurt carton's ten times more smarter than you. And a good sense of humor, too. Cap, look, I appreciate the visit, man. But can you go and do something else now? I'm a bit on edge at the moment. You are? Why's that? Uh, oh, yeah. Right. David, come on. You caught a virus, it's fatal, it happens. Doesn't mean we can't be friends. It's the only way, Crichton. Get back over there, detonate this stuff, and destroy all traces of the virus. At least I'll rob it of the satisfaction of killing me. You can't do this. You can't leave. Your underwear is the only thing that gives my life meaning. Dave, close the airlock. What you're doing is insane. Dave, listen to me. Dave, my Dave, had a saying. Even the word hopeless has hope in it. Maybe you had to be there. What the hell did that mean? I don't know. He was drunk when he said it and his hand was in my blouse. But the point is, you can't give up. You've got to prevent Epidem from killing me by killing me. I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> is he going to turn into one of those crumbly snog monsters? Uh, careful, Miss Kachansky. Don't get too close to him. At least not without a gun and a bucket of breath mints. Is he... Dead? Yes, Mom! Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Which direction shall I go? This way? That way? Nah. This way. Yeah, look on the bright side. At least now I'm only off crap. Oh, we should still count all our blessings, sir. I am. What's zero plus zero? Crichton's right. The Epidem virus may have cost you a limb, but there are countless people who have lost an arm and gone on to lead a perfectly Normal life. Nelson, he beat the French. Lord Nelson, thank you, ma'am. He beat the French. He wouldn't have if Trafalgar had been an arm wrestling tournament. Who else? So the arm was no good? Hopeless. It was either totally out of control or slower than the service in a French fast food restaurant. There must be a solution to this. What about your self-repair system? Can't that help? Mum? When you have a mechanical failure, it fixes itself, doesn't it? The Crichton back in my dimension had these tiny little robots. Subatomic. I mean, really tiny. Smaller than a supermodel's lunch bill. Oh, nanobots. They break objects down into their component atoms and then recombine those atoms to repair damaged circuits. Nanotechnology. So what happens if we transferred some of your nanobots into Dave? Wouldn't they be able to build him a new arm from his excess body tissue? What excess body tissue? Come on, bud. Your butter spread further than most religions. Unfortunately, Mom, it's not possible, no. Why not? I no longer have any nanobots, sir. They deserted me. When and where, I can't be exactly certain. You lost them. Crichton, man, how could you? They're subatomic, Dave. Give them a break. You have a tough time keeping track of your keys. But if we were to find these nanobots, could they build me a new arm? Doesn't make any sense. All the instruments are saying that planetoid is Red Dwarf. Oh, come on, guys, the ships are great. You can't trust the instrument readouts. He's right. The only consistently reliable piece of machinery on this entire ship is a tin opener in the galley. Ordinarily, Mom, I'd be as sneery as you. However, there is one additional factor. Which is? Well, we've been here before. What did I tell you? The weather scan's useless. In future, we'd be better off asking the tin opener. Okay, I'm going to take some readings and grab some soil samples. 
What about sex? Not here, it's too sandy. I mean, as a woman, how would you feel about making love to someone you cared about who's only got one arm? Honestly? Honestly. With someone I cared about? Yes. With one arm? Yes. I'd feel that no matter how much I cared about them before, here it's too sandy. Once we get back to the ship, hey, but not with the cat due back any second. Only air hostesses. All right, dudes, what's going down in... Gordon Bennett. I've forgotten it. It's gone. Holly! All right, dudes, what's going down the chimney? Nah, it was better than that. I'll try what's going down in Groove Town. Oh, that's good. I like that a lot. Ever consider selling it? What the smell are you doing here, Hull? Those little what's-its. Nanobots? So what, they fixed your core programme and then decided they'd be better off without you? Yeah, it was shortly after they'd met me. Are you OK now? Never better. I realise now I am definitely not a woman and I'm dying to fully test my IQ of 6,000. OK, Hulk. Tell us about these nanobots. No science questions. Don't need the pressure, mate. However, if you just want to give me light duties like telling the time, providing I don't always have to be right, then I think I can handle it. Five past three. Feeling good, yeah. <laughs> well, from one machine to another, welcome back online, Holly. But they're nanobots. They can change anything into anything else. Yeah, they can take a pot noodle and turn it into food. Five past four, if anyone's interested. So they took Red Dwarf, made a subatomic version, and turned the rest of the atoms into a planetoid for safekeeping. But we were chasing the nano Red Dwarf. That's why the readings were so minute and hard to pinpoint. Did I say five past four? I meant four minutes past five. So now they could be anywhere. You pursued them across half the galaxy. You mean the nanos could be in here? On board Starbucks somewhere? Hey, he could be right. He's back. Kicking bottom or what? Hello? Chris, see if you can find a frequency to establish contact. How? Where will they be? Next on the dial to say Radio Tiny? Leave it to me, sir. I know how to make contact. 